Should you spend your money on official MagSafe chargers or get the brand new Qi 2, which Apple helped make happen and is actually cheaper while having the same 15 watt charging instead of 7.5 with every other third party charger for iPhones? Let me tell you that my mind was blown when I was doing this test because I looked at everything, charging speeds, wattage, temperature, and I know that you will not be expecting these results. Now I tested these MagSafe pucks, but these results also apply for 3-in-1 chargers and car chargers because most of them are only 7.5 unless you spend way more money or get the new Qi 2. I also ordered Anker's new 15 watt MagGo Qi 2 battery pack, which is the first true 15 watt wireless battery, so make sure to subscribe for that video. Let's start with the first test that really surprised me. I used three 15 Pro Maxes, which were completely dead, and laid out the charger starting with the MagSafe on the left, then Qi 2, followed by the original Qi Puck. I plugged them all in into an outlet bank with a button to turn them on to make it perfectly fair, and my first test was to see how long it would take for the iPhones to turn on. Surprisingly, official MagSafe was the last one to start charging the iPhone, but when I waited for the phones to turn on, it didn't disappoint. It took only about a minute and a half to turn the phone on, being in first place. Following that was the new Qi 2 charger, which took about two minutes. And then started the grueling wait for the 7.5 watt charger. By the way, all of these were plugged into identical 30 watt Taurus T-Ice power adapters to make sure there are no differences and more than enough power for the chargers. Time was going and I was getting tired of holding the camera, starting to think that I had a bad 7.5 watt puck, but it was working and the last 15 Pro Max finally turned on after a crazy long 10 minutes. So we have a huge difference in the time it takes for your phone to turn on so you can actually use it. Then of course I made sure the brightness levels were the same and the phones were set to do not disturb mode and I turned off the always on display to make sure we have no differences. At 15 minutes I logged the charge percentage and MagSafe hit 10%, Qi 2 charged 30% more at 13%, while the original Qi only hit an embarrassing 2%. Now if you think it was broken like I did, just wait a little bit. Both the MagSafe and Anker's MagGo Qi 2, which output 15 watts, will pull just over 18 watts to make this happen. Happen, but at roughly the 20 minute mark, I couldn't believe that they were both throttled already with MagSafe pulling around 11 watts, but Qi 2 was pulling 12, which is why it is charging faster. Now, you would think that the original Qi 1 would be pulling about half of that, but it wasn't. It was pulling over 8, so it's still maintaining its full 7.5 watt output instead of throttling. At the 30 minute mark, MagSafe hit 22%, but Qi 2 was able to hit 26, so it's clear clearly taking the lead and Qi 1 was at a measly 12%, but that's to be expected because it's half of the rated output. Nowadays, 7.5 watt pucks are cheap and this one only costs 13 bucks compared to 40 for MagSafe. But now that Qi 2 is out and it's 15 watts, you can get one for only 22 bucks, so it is a great deal compared to Apple's. MagSafe also only comes with a three foot cable, which can be limiting if you wanna use your phone while charging, compared to five feet with anchors, and the cheap one actually gives you a six foot cable with this little tie, so that is nice. Now both apples and anchors are made out of metal, while the cheap one is plastic, and another difference is how thick these things are. The MagSafe puck is very thin compared to the others, and anchors is about twice the thickness, so I thought it would help dissipate heat better. But using my thermal camera, you could see how much more heat heat was transferred and trapped to the iPhone with the anchor. It hit 38 Celsius compared to 35 for the others at their hottest spot, and MagSafe was actually having the least heat overall, as you could see in the thermal video. At the 45 minute mark, both MagSafe and Qi 2 gained 11%, while Qi 1 gained 9, which is not surprisingly bad because it is rated for half. Now, most people say that slow charging is better for your iPhone's battery health because it will have less heat, 
So some people actually buy these cheaper 7.5 watts because of that slower charging. But what shocked me was that when I tested the heat after 45 minutes, the 7.5 watt Qi was actually the hottest now at 37 degrees Celsius, followed by the faster 36 degrees Qi 2 and MagSafe being the coolest at 34 degrees and with much less heat spreading around. So it looks like you're actually better off doing fast charging at first and then slowly tapering off when the phones get hot then having a consistent 7.5 watt load. Now, I did not expect that at all, and there'll be a few more surprises coming out. After one hour, MagSafe started to catch up with Qi 2, being at 43% compared to 45, with the original Qi hitting 28%, gaining only 7% in 15 minutes. And I think that is because of heat. At one hour and 15 minutes, we have 53% and 54% for the fast chargers and only 33 for the 7.5 watt. So at this point, it is already about half an hour behind. In the next 15 minutes, surprisingly, all three gained 9%. So it looks like the phones cooled off a bit and we're all charging at roughly 7.5 watts. At the one hour and 45 minute mark, we have 71%, 72%, and 50 for Qi 1. Fun fact, if you're using a wired USB-C cable, you would hit 50% in just 30 minutes. At two hours, MagSafe finally caught up with Qi 2 and both hit 79% and 58 for the slow one. Now, 15 minutes later, we have 87, 87, and 67. So 7.5 watt is consistently about 20% behind, which at least isn't half the speed like some might think. After two and a half hours, MagSafe actually took the lead at 94% compared to 93 and 73. And at two hours and 45, Qi 1 finally hit 80%, where charging speeds start to slow down while the others were almost done at 97 and 96. Now, the most insane thing is that in the next 15 minutes, Qi 1 only gained 1% and no, optimized charging was disabled on all these phones. I think it was just chilling, trying to cool down. The others were almost charged and then just after the three hour mark, they both hit 100% compared to 81. So for those of you curious folks, Qi 2 takes the same amount of time to charge your phone as Max 8 does. And in the short term, it is actually quicker, which is nice. It also costs only 22 bucks, which is a bargain. And the magnet is actually stronger than Apple and it also comes with that five foot cable. But it definitely heats your phone more when I would expect it to be cooler being this thick. I think that the inside of it might be more hollow, just like the cheap Qi 1 chargers, and it actually uses less metal than MagSafe, so I think more of the heat just stays in your phone. With that said, I measured the temps of the pucks themselves right when the first two hit 100%, and MagSafe was a lot cooler overall, and it peaked at 35 watts Celsius compared to 37 for the other two. So if you care about temperatures, you should definitely stick with genuine and MagSafe unless you find a cooler uh, that comes with some of these Qi ones. Some of them have fans like ESRs. Now, the other benefit of MagSafe is that there are a ton of cheap stands and holders that they will fit into where the third party ones won't. Now, the 7.5 watt Qi 1 hit 86% at three hours and 15 minutes, and it basically just crawled in charging speed, finally reaching 100% after four hours of charging. With that, it heated up the phone more so than the others, and it took absolutely forever for the phone to turn on when we first started the test. So even though it only costs 13 bucks, there is no way that I would recommend it when Anchor's new Mago Qi 2 only costs $9 more. By the way, I bought all of these myself and no brands are sponsoring this video. So if you wanna pick up one of these, I'll just go ahead and link them down below. Now, now let me know your thoughts and make sure you subscribe to see how Apple's MagSafe battery pack, which they themselves limit to 7.5 watts, compares to Anchor's new 15 watt Maggo Chi 2 battery pack, which costs less money. Click right up there to subscribe and check out one of those excellent videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.